Hi everyone, this is Dave AC TV, and this is my V blog 124 for Friday the 3rd of December 2010. Uh, awards, records, revivals, reviews, weather and wine. Uh, and there will be a, a primeval struggle to Smallville, all this flashy stuff in 15 minutes. And uh, yes, I am cold, but hopefully no wine will be warm. And I'll let you into a secret. It will be warm because this is my second go. Do you know what happened? I recorded it and ran 15 minutes and 3 seconds. Well, that won't go up to YouTube. So here we go on starting blocks. Watch that time, David, this time. End a few seconds early, if you remember. Well, um, welcome. <laughs> There'll be no, uh, no uh, book, no classical music, and I might even drop at least one more item that I had thing because I've got to keep it under 15 minutes. Well, uh, podcasting and Doctor Who news first of all. Uh, the Doctor Who Podshock, there's no new episode up as I looked uh, just recently. Still episode 228 is the main one with the 229 Aftershock. But uh, Lewis has put up another episode of the uh, Sonic News Driver. So do check out that. And probably the best place to check those out is on the uh, uh, iTunes. So I'm going to mention as well for the Cult and Collective, which I'm going to go on to now, is um, consider subscribing to it on iTunes. The reason being that one or two of our episodes now are quite often going to two, two and a half hours, over three hours in fact. And that's a long show to listen to in one session. It's ideal, of course, if you're on a long train journey or if you're listening to it at work while you get on with your jobs. Uh, but sometimes uh, people prefer to listen to it in stages. So, of course, you can listen to the Cult and Collective from Podcast Alley uh, from our Facebook fan page on uh, uh, the Cult and Collective fan page or from the cultum.com blog page or indeed from my Dave AC New Media or Podcast Alley. Um, but you may want to go and subscribe on iTunes and then it's on to your device and you can stop and start it as and when it suits you. OK, what have you got to listen to? Well, most recently, the Sunday that's just gone, done, we did uh, When Dinosaurs Rule the Box Office. So I hope you'll give that one a listen. Uh, went two hours, two and a half hours. The first half hour is news and so on. We've also put up the second of our little Christmas treats, and this is the second of the Dot Two Christmas specials, and this is our cult and commentary, The Runaway Bride. That's with Ian the Sixth Doctor, uh, Mike Randall Thor, and myself, Dave AC. Hope you'll give that a listen and uh, you'll enjoy it. Okay, a little, oh, <laughs> talking about the show, which of course, uh, this coming Sunday, by the way, we will be doing, uh, this is the 5th of December, 2010, at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, talk show ID 54821, we'll be doing about sci-fi and fantasy role models. Not anti-heroes and things like this, but good role models that uh, maybe younger children will learn good uh uh, morals and whatever from now that means we're, we're not going to be preaching about that we're just going to pick and choose the heroes that we think make good role models so please join us for that and one more thing about uh, talk show in our podcast blink and it's gone yes the last episode i did i was mentioning about a sip client that was very easy to connect to talk to you called blink well, the actual software still works indeed as a SIP client, but it appears as though there's some technical issues with that and you. I was showing Ian the Sixth Doctor how to get in to um, talk you with it because he hadn't seen the program and uh, he was blocked. I tried it and it was blocked again. So I hope it is a technical issue, but it may well be that Torchu do not want people to use that particular client to phone in. So if you had issues with Blink, it may well be talk to you itself. But there are other facilities that you can make use with. I mean, he himself tried a private call with it and, and it worked fine. OK, so that's that. Other little bits of sci-fi and Doctor Who info. Well, um, 
one of the favourite guest actresses that was on Doctor Who, and that was Carey Mulligan, who played at Sally Sparrow in, indeed, the episode called Blink, um, wins Women in Film and TV Award. This, uh, Mulligan, who's now 25, um, will be honoured in the Women in Film and Awards uh, later. Uh, I'm not quite sure of the date, but she will be receiving it for uh, her Oscar-nominated performance and education. So well done to Kerry Mulligan. Really uh, one of these blossoming young actresses. Brilliant. The other Doctor Who related news is uh, that the uh, seventh Doctor, Sylvester McCoy, has again hinted that he would love to reprise his role on Doctor Who. And of course the, the ideal situation for that would probably be in the 50th anniversary in three years' time. Remember, we've just celebrated the 47th anniversary of Doctor Who. So um, maybe a multi-Doctor story for the 50th anniversary. If so, he's definitely up for it. And I've got a feeling that the 8th Doctor is up for it, having sported his new outfit recently for Big Finish. OK, and we'll have to watch the time and motor on. Other science fiction. Well, it's been announced that... Um, Series 4 of Primeval will be coming to the screens in the UK uh, fairly soon. In actual fact, on the 21st of February on ITV, I believe. But BBC America have announced that it will air on the 1st of January. So they're going to get it first because it's one of these co-productions. So that is, uh, I think there are 13 episodes they're going to make. There's a Series 4 and a Series 5. And... Uh, Really good to have um, it back. And I'm not going to be able to show you the YouTube clip, clip now because I think that's what probably took me over. But if you go to YouTube and look for BBC America, their most recent uh, clip on there is Primeval Series 4 trailer. Put that in YouTube and you'll find it. It's about a 1 minute 23 seconds trailer. And I think that's what took me over my time limit. OK, um, one other bit of news about playing stuff. The BBC iPlayer have announced that they are indeed going with this new international version. And the first place it will be used on is the iPad. They're going to bring an app out for the iPad and it will be a subscription based uh, way of doing it. Not advert funded, but subscription. And that will be sometime in the new year as they roll out the international way for people to get BBC content. And the first one is going to be, as I say, this subscription model. And one more piece of uh, information about the BBC, uh, and this is to do with the radio. In the new year, BBC Radio, which of course, uh, Radio 3, which of course is available on iTunes, not re region locked, announces a Mozart season. Is for the first 12 days in January, they're only going to play on Radio 3 Mozart music. And that is to celebrate, um, well, not celebrate, he died in 1791. And of course, the new year will be 2011. So they're having a special season of Mozart music. So listen out for that. And there was uh, lots of other bits of tech news, wasn't there? Um, there's this... I was waiting to hear this NASA announcement about um, new life form. Uh, but of course, it's not alien life form. It's actually found on Earth. It's a bacterium that uses arsenic in place of phosphorus, one of the, the five constituent elements that are needed for life on Earth is usually phosphorus. And this is the first time they've found something that thrives on arsenic instead of that, so that increases the possibilities of how life can form maybe elsewhere in the universe. So in that sense, it's very exciting news. And one other piece of news I noticed when there was about a military space plane. Haven't heard anything about this. Prototype space plane built for the US, US military returns to Earth after seven months in orbit. That's pretty amazing, with all these uh, WikiLeaks going on. Seven months in orbit, no pilot, 
It was flown remotely, landed remotely. It's about a third or a quarter the size of the shuttle, looks like a space shuttle, and uh, that has just touched down after a successful test. OK, I'm going to have to refer to my notes now because I've got to watch the time. And uh, we've got no book, no classical music, but I have got a DVD. For my birthday, I got Series 8 of Smallville. Now, I haven't started watching the episodes yet because I'm re-watching an earlier box set. So I've gone straight to the bonus creature, uh, features. And this is the actress Alison Mack who's been given the chance to direct one of the episodes. She plays Zoe, of course, um, in the series. And let's hope this plays, because it's been on standby for a while. Here we go. They got to see that exemplified from the feminine point of Play. view. Play. Alison couldn't have asked for a better episode to direct. It's really, it's really a great one, and I think great for her as well, because she has a very keen eye, especially for women, and how women work. I love it that actors think about their work and want to do more, because all it's going to do is engage them more in the show, and that's really what it's about. Tom's directed, Michael Rosenbaum has directed, John Schneider has directed. I asked Tom why he decided to do it, and Tom said, there is no place where I'm going to be given $3 million to do my first project. It's just not going to happen again. Very talented. He's gone on to do... Hydro and other shows. And then Michael did a show in season six, and he brought so much to that as well. And here came Allie, which we expected no less. The fact that they looked at me and thought, yeah, we want you to represent our show. We want you to be the one steering the ship for this episode. That doesn't happen everywhere. That's amazing. It's, a it's amazing, and I'm going to have to stop it there. Now, that was a, quite a revelation, wasn't it? Three million dollars, so that's presumably what each episode of Smallville, at least by series eight, was costing. Of course, we're now in the process of uh, uh, series 10 is airing in the States, and I believe that is the final um, uh, series of Smallville, which I really, really enjoy. Uh, I got it uh, for one of my birthday presents, uh, but it was with money given to me, so I know how much it costs only 15 pounds down from £30, that's about $22, uh, and I was very pleased with that. OK, I've now got just two minutes or so to do my wine, and I must end on time, otherwise I'm up the kibosh. And here it is. It's a limited edition wine by Tesco, finest vintage 2000. It's a Spanish wine from the Val de Pinas area. It's a Grand Reserva, look, 2000. The grape is Tempranillo. Only 30,000 bottles produced. Spanish wine and um, aged in oak barrels, then bottled, kept in the winery cellars for 10 years for a perfectly mature, superbly richly flavoured Grand Reserva. So it's been standing here, and because I've done this twice the show it has now at last warmed up so here we go i'm getting lots of them um, sort of brambly um berry smell from this mm. I didn't say the other way 13 percent and it's very red berry in actual fact say it's 10 years old uh, it wasn't in barrels for 10 years, probably in barrels for a year, although in actual fact, Grand Reserva probably means it has to be 18 months in uh, oak, I think, and then the rest in bottle. It's, the, the oak isn't overpowering, overpowering, it's actually more of a, a vanilla edge to it. There's a little bit of floral in there. Some people will say violets, but I'm, I, my nose isn't and taste isn't that good, but there's a definite slight floral edge to it, and it's quite a long, little bit of a, they call it a mocha or a chocolatey edge to it as well. Very pleasant indeed. I'm not actually sure what I paid for this. I've had it in for some time, but uh, I couldn't go out shopping with all the snow, so I decided to uh, treat you and me with one of my better bottles. I've got a feeling it's usually about £9, but I think I got it for 6 which is, so 
it's probably a, a 10 or 12 dollar bottle and my time is up oh i've got to stop it see you next week bye all